Hi there, Internet. My name's Ollie and I love air guns. Welcome to the Classic Air Gun Show. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of the Classic Air Gun Show. Thank you for joining us. Now, really interesting one today. I've been really excited about putting this one on, on film for you. Uh, and today we're going to look at something from the, uh, the Venom Custom Workshops and specifically something very unusual from the mid-90s. So by, by the mid-90s, obviously Dave Pope, Ivan Hancock and, and the team were, were at a very well-deserved reputation for producing some of the most fantastic uh, custom spring air guns available anywhere in the world. Uh, but you could say that one of their defining characteristics was the, the quality of finish and luxury. So when you think of uh, a lot of the Venom products, it was things like the, the Barmington, the Hunter, and, and obviously using the laser glide uh, internals. But it was about great, glossy, beautiful walnut stocks, whether they're a thumb hole or a more sports style or Tyrolean. Um, fantastic bluing, but everything was, as I say, very luxurious. Then in, in late, um, late 1994, uh, they obviously had a bit of a, a brainstorm or had a, one too many drinks one Friday afternoon and came up with something incredibly different. So today what I'm going to show you is the Venom TDR. Now whilst researching this I actually managed to find an, an original copy of Egg and World from uh, from January 1995 that features this rifle or the prototype of it. Now what's really interesting is uh, there are some changes from the prototype to this which is a, a production model. Uh, some of them for, critically and I'll put some photos on, on the video from the magazine as well is um, although they even in the article said this is an optional extra the uh, the prototype had a the, the Venom BB MF uh, silencer fitted although they did say that this normal sleeve silencer was going to be the, the standard model. The prototype had two sort of small blue steel locking rings here, um, or locking bolts for the barrel. Now the production version obviously then came with brass, so with a retaining hex head bolt on top. Uh, further, the stock, so on the prototype the stock came out at a straight angle to this butt plate. Uh, whereas on the production models it came and had a slight angle in it and actually I've put a bit of or well, the person who had this before me put a bit of plastic on here because believe me on a cold day you do not want to put bare metal against your cheek um, so I say it's really interesting a massive departure uh, from what you typically associate with uh, with the Venom workshops of, of the time Venom uh, rifles of the time but it's incredibly interesting now in doing, doing some research, I've actually sort of spoken to a number of the uh, the, the wise heads on uh, on various Venom forums, and uh, the consensus is that this was an incredibly limited production. Uh, don't have any information as to why, but there could be as few as six uh, production examples actually out there. And um, so, you know, for most of you, I hope this video is enjoyable because the, the chances are most people will never get the opportunity to see this. Now, when I saw this sort of become available and, and I, I bought from a, a very lovely gentleman down in Essex so he knows who he is thank you very much it is appreciated and um, but I remember first of all I remember the air gun world I, the copy I have is, is, is a copy of a magazine that I had um, back when I was 14 you know, and I remember the prototype and I remember being enthralled by it at the time and a few months later air gunner magazine did a uh, an article with a production version so far more reminiscent of this this version and um, where they actually somebody hunted a mink so again quite memorable because that, that's something that's quite unusual to see in an air gun magazine um, now the the production versions however many of them there were had the options come it does say the, the bbmf barrel but critically they had the options come as, as multi-caliber so this is a 2-2 so it's based on originally a Webley XL, so it's highly sort of uh, tuned on the inside and vastly improved trigger. But as you can see probably here with, with the sort of cotton reel style uh, breech assembly, it's very much a Webley XL. <clears throat> so you unscrew these two bolts and the barrel pops out. So you could purchase it with a 177 and a 22. Obviously 22 would be legal limit 
um, the 177 would be slightly underpowered because of the, the, the restrictions on velocity. Also, they're very, very clear too to advise that the, the takedown feature, so folding the butt, taking the butt plate off, and removing the barrel, was for convenience, not concealment. Uh, and I hasten to add that again. So I cannot fire this with the stock folded because it, you know, it, although I haven't measured the overall length, probably getting quite close to being a, a over six foot pound pistol at that point. So very much I keep it in this configuration at all times. Um, other things to consider with this, uh, and this may have contributed to the limited production run, is it's not the most comfortable rifle I've ever shot. So I'll turn this way. As you hold it, there's no way, you can't really fit your thumb here. So actually, in terms of how you shoot this, and you'll see this probably a bit later on, is I actually put my thumb here. Now, the reason I came up with that idea is I saw it in one of the, uh, of one of the articles that I read. So you're shouldering it with your thumb up. The other thing I would say is um, you, you're finding yourself constantly checking these. So between shots when I do the range stuff, I'll be, um, I will be tightening every bolt again. So you get as much consistency as possible because as I say, spring rifle, hold sensitive. Um, it's any small variances can have a really big impact down range. And um, I have no idea why they produce so few of these. It could simply be that nobody liked them. I don't think that's true. My gut tells me that due to having to fiddle with everything, if you took the barrel off and put it back on, you'd have to re-zero. I just feel that, um, you know, it probably didn't live up to the levels of consistency and quality that, uh, that, that Venom sort of pride themselves on. And it's probably more about sort of protecting the, the, the brand and doing things right for their customers. And uh, if there's anyone out there who does know, please do contact me. Let me, let me know your thoughts. But uh, this is just what I like to think and, and what we all know and love about, about Venom as a business and, and the gentleman involved at the time. But uh, you know, look, I, I see, you know, that sort of late 80s to sort of mid 90s, very, very heyday for, uh, for Venom. It's a, it's a lovely little footnote in their history. I'm, I'm delighted to, to have the opportunity to sort of share it with you today. But let's, uh, let's take it to the range and uh, see if it still shoots. Look, I believe in being honest, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I, I zeroed this two days ago uh, and it was shooting fantastically. I said I did have to cons constantly be checking all of the, the bolts to make sure everything was, was fine. But when I did that, it worked beautifully. And, and as you've just seen, within a couple of days, taking it back out, it's, it's shifted again. So I think, um, am, am I disappointed? Not really. I think I expected that from this sort of design of rifle. And uh, and I'm pretty sure that if I actually sort of just tweaked the scope slightly, zeroed it in, I could happily shoot all afternoon. Um, but no, I don't want to have to do that every time I shoot the same rifle. So look, there, there is a bit of a challenge um, if for those who are interested because I, it's a sort of 90s Webley barrel. I've been using sort of Air Arms Diablo 5.52. I find they tend to work well in things like Vulcans, Eclipses, Excels of, of the era. Um, but so I don't think there's any problems with the pellets or the scope. Got a Nico Sterling Mountain Master on here, basic, but should be fine at 25 yards. So I just think we're going to have a, like, similar to the Lee Enfield number no. five jungle carbine, which has got a, a, an issue of shifting zero just inherently within the design. And going back to what I said earlier, I, I think that's probably why, um, you know, we see so few of these. It's because although a really interesting and, you know, I think quite cool design, 
it, there's some inherent problems with it that just meant it didn't sort of live up to the, the great uh, Venom standard. So there we go, the, uh, the Venom TDR. Uh, so probably the uh, one of the rarest um, types of venom out there and uh, as I say most people will go through an entire gunning life and, and never set eyes on one and, and I feel incredibly privileged uh, to be able to use one and show it to you today and um, again ask that same question am I pleased that I've got this 100% it, it still makes me smile and I, I compare it to, to driving a Defender uh, driving a Land Rover Defender is one of the, particularly I'm six foot five, one of the most uncomfortable things I could possibly do. But every time I do it, it makes me smile because it's different, it's quirky, it's British, it's unusual, and and it's an experience you just cannot get from another car. And I'm going to view this rifle in much the same way. Is it perfect? No. Is there a reason they produce so few? Probably. And um, however. I will still continue to use it and shoot it and learn its quirks and idiosyncrasies. Um, I didn't want to just show you a video of, of, the, uh, of the discs flying everywhere once I'd re-zeroed it because I didn't think that would tell the true story. So I hope you appreciate um, me being honest rather than show you uh, some glory shots. But look, uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know. Please sort of, uh, like, comment, share. Uh, or, or contacted me through social media for those who, who know me on, on Facebook. And um, as I say, I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you do ever see one of these elsewhere, you know, please do grab it for yourself. And you, I promise you, you may not be shooting 10 rings all day, but you'll certainly have a big smile on your face. Look, take care, look after yourselves, and uh, see you at the next episode.